Today on the fast lane scooter, we're out here in Denver, Colorado, checking out the latest craze in mobility, electric ride sharing scooters. We're gonna find out which one's best, and most importantly, are they safe? In order to figure out which scooter is the best scooter, we're gonna do a few things in this video. We're gonna put them through some performance testing, so acceleration and braking tests. We're gonna see what kind of features they offer, and by the end of this video, you'll know exactly which one is the best for you, and whether or not they're actually safe to ride. All these scooters are unlocked in a very similar fashion. We'll use the Lime scooter to demonstrate, but basically you have to plug in your credit card information to an app on your smartphone and scan your driver's license on that same app. And then what you do is you hit the little scan to ride button, you find the QR code that's located on the handlebar of most of these, and it scans the QR code and unlocks your scooter. What we have here is four competing brands of electric scooters. And here in Denver, over the summer of 2018, the city of Denver issued 350 permits for every company to bring scooters into the city with some regulation. Now these two right here are by far the most popular. We have, of course, the Lime and the Bird series of electric scooter. These have been around for quite a number of months now in other cities throughout the United States. They're pretty ubiquitous. Now over here, we've got some oddball entries. This one is made by Razor. Razor, of course, has been a scooter brand for years and years and years, and this is their entry into this market. Now, this final one actually was introduced in Denver. It's a Lyft scooter. Lyft, of course, does car ride sharing, just like Uber, and now they've come out with this line of scooters, which actually, if you look closely, is the same scooter as a bird. Now, let's look at every scooter individually and see what they offer. This Razor is certainly the most different of the ride sharing scooters. And this is really embarrassing to admit, but I am a little bit of a scooter aficionado. Um, I started riding scooters when I was really little and I had an electric scooter that was made by Razor. I'm in college and I still ride a scooter on campus. I just think they're a lot of fun. They're a great way to get around. And this Razor has a very different philosophy than the other shared ride scooters. Now, if you know Razors, this is what looks like a very standard Razor scooter, something like an E200 or an E300. You can tell that this maybe was derived from a kid scooter because the handlebars are by far the lowest here. So from the deck to the handlebars, it's only about 35 inches, which is really short, especially when compared to the 44 inch handlebar height on the Lime. Additionally, it's got a really fat deck that's pretty short, so if you've got big feet like I do, it can be a little bit tricky to, to really position yourself in a comfortable way. And it also has the fattest tires here, which means it is the most comfortable over rough terrain or gravel. Now it's also the only scooter here that's rear wheel drive, so the other ones are front wheel drive. This one has a rear wheel drive system, and it has a rear disc brake right here. On the dashboard here, we actually have the only scooter with the ability to turn the light on and off via this button, and then there's no bell on the Razor scooter, which is a little bit unfortunate. Now let's take a look at the deck length. We of course have this big step up here. The other scooters you can push down on the rear end to actuate a brake, and this one you can't, it's fixed, and this is about a 29 inch deck in total, of course, with this ramp. Now, when we look at ground clearance, three and a half inches. So it's pretty low on ground clearance, even though we do have these nice, big, and chunky tires. Every city and municipality has their own rules regarding these scooters. Now, I looked it up for Denver, and it's a little bit interesting. You see, Denver doesn't want you to ride these scooters in bike lanes or on the road. They actually ask that you ride them on sidewalks, so that's what we're doing here. Now, we're gonna do some performance testing on this stretch of empty sidewalk to see just how fast it'll go and what the zero to 16 mile per hour speed is if it'll do 16 at all. So I've got a GPS performance timer here and we'll see what this Razor can do. It won't do above 10. It won't go above 10? <laughs> no, I'm gonna try it one more time. Okay. Okay, so I was only able to hit about 14 miles an hour. It took about six or seven seconds. Acceleration is pretty leisurely, but this is actually very interesting. Check this out. 
All these scooters require a couple kicks before they allow you to take over with electric power, and that speed varies scooter to scooter. Now the Razor hardly requires any momentum at all. Look, I can just simply move it a little bit, and there it goes. Now, this is a problem because this particular one has a sticky throttle. So if I push the throttle down, it sometimes sticks either halfway or all the way on, which means if I give it a little bit of a kick, it'll just, <laughs> just take off. So I'm very disappointed with not only how little momentum it takes to get this thing to move, but this sticky throttle. We're going to investigate some other razors to see if the throttle has the same problem. It is not safe, Tommy. That, no, look, do another demonstration? Yeah, uh, please. Okay, straighten her out. Okay, throttle is on, throttle is stuck on. I, I'm going to move it a little bit and <laughs> This razor here is $1 to unlock and 15 cents per minute. Let me show you how the interface works. So I open up the Razer app like such. I've already plugged in my credit card information and my driver's license, and then I click scan. I hover the QR scan over like that, and I'm ready to go. And you can see, I can turn the light on and off with this little toggle switch here. You'll notice Tommy and I are wearing these goofy helmets because, well, you should always be safe and you should always wear a helmet. Next, we're gonna test the scooter's braking performance. So, I'm the heavier guy. I think it'll be a better test for these brakes. It's definitely a more difficult test for these brakes. So I'm gonna go down there, get the scooter up to its top speed, and then when I hit this cone, I'm gonna go full on the brakes and see we have a second cone to measure how far it takes to stop from full speed to zero. Michael, you can see here you are maxing out the traction on that rear brake though, look. Yeah, there's a little skip trail there. Okay, so there's the front tire. So 385 is the total stopping distance on the Razor. Divide that by 12. 32 feet to stop from like 12, 12 13, 14 That's miles an so hour. Weird. We appear to have found a gaggle of Razor scooters here. One, two, three, four of them. And let's see if any of these also have that sticky problem issue like our test one has here. Let's try this one. No, that one's okay. How about this one? That one's really good. That's a fresh handle. Yeah, that one's okay too. So it looks like the issue is only with this one. So that is good to know. But it is also worth saying that these razors, they feel a little bit lower quality than some of the others. Let's take a quick look at some of these other razors to show what I'm talking about. How about this one here? Scan this one. Oh, low battery. Please scan another scooter. So the way that batteries are charged on these scooters is essentially it's members of the community that come out, pick up scooters, charge them up at their house, and then Bird or Lime or whoever pays them to charge and maintain the scooter. So that's how that works. Let's check out this one. Oh, low battery as well. So this is interesting, Michael. Um, went to switch some scooters to try a different Razor, and we have about seven or eight in one vicinity here, yeah, and they're, they're all dead. All of them. Yeah, we're on the hunt for another razor to give it another fair shot. Okay, trying yet another razor. Someone graffitied these. Duh! What? Finally got one. After Wait. like my seventh try, I got another razor. 100% battery, Michael. 100% battery in this new razor. Oh, my, nope, my, my razors just died. Oh. Low battery. Well, it was at 100%. It was at 100% when I left it over there. And now it's at low battery. Suspect. I think we should go grab a not razor. I think they we need keep, to get, yeah, we gotta keep get away failing from us. This is the Lime Scooter. It's one of the earlier entries into the scooter sharing world. So I wanted to show off some of its features so you can understand a little bit more about the scooter. First and foremost, it's one of the tallest from the base of the deck to the top of the handlebars. We have a tape measure to measure that. As you can see, it's about 44 inches tall from deck to handlebar, which we'll measure the other ones too, but that is really tall. Obviously, there is the go button right here. You push this to make it move. There's a brake handle right here. There's a little bell, makes a nice noise. Uh, there's a forward facing light right on the front here and a brake light. And then the one cool thing that the Lime has that the others don't have is a speedometer right here. So you can actually see how fast you're going. For science, we wanted to measure the size of the deck itself. And the Lime scooter is about 27 inches from the front of the deck to the back. We also want to measure ground clearance to see how much this can go over. So a little measurement right there. You can see it's about three and a half, four inches. 
Let's talk about cost here on the Lime Scooter. So like all the other scooters, this one is $1 to unlock. It's a flat charge. You always start by paying $1. Then after that, it's $1 per 30 minutes of riding. So depending on how far you go in that 30 minutes, you're still gonna pay $1 per 30 minutes. Okay, so I actually hit 18 miles an hour according to our GPS timer here, which is by far the fastest of the scooters we've tested. It took about 10 seconds, but you really gain a lot of velocity quickly on the line. I'd say the rest of the scooters are fairly matched in terms of top speed, but the line is a different ball game. It's several miles an hour quicker than its competition. This, fine people of the internet, is an example of how to park your ride-sharing scooter well. You can see there's some city ride-sharing bikes back there. Just put the scooters right next to them. They're out of the way. That's how you know where it's a good spot. So, so the, the reason this is an impressive result is because I was going 16 miles an hour when I hit the brakes, which is a good... According to that. According to this. The fact that this could stop me in this short of a distance at a higher speed is even more impressive, I think. 309 inches is right, Michael, divided by 12. It's about 25 feet. Next, we're gonna talk about the Bird and the Lift scooter because, well, you can take a good look at them and see that they are pretty much the exact same scooter. We'll start out by measuring their height because these two are kind of the middle ground compared to the other two we talked about. The handlebar is 38 inches off of the deck. You can see they have a lot of the same features as the other scooters as well. There's a little throttle button, a brake handle, there's a light up in the front, and once again, a little bell. They have a kickstand, uh, and these two are front wheel drive, just like the Lime Scooter. Uh, let's take a measurement of the board to see how long the board is, because this one is a fairly narrow board, and it's not as long either. This one's only 22 and a half inches. Uh, and in terms of ground clearance, about three and a half, four inches of ground clearance, which seems to be pretty common among these scooters. The one area in which these two scooters are in fact different is pricing, because while they're both $1 to unlock, the cost per usage is slightly different. The Bird scooter costs 15 cents per mile, where the Lyft scooter costs 15 cents per minute of use. The coolest part about the Lyft scooter is that it uses the regular Lyft app, so you don't have to download a special app like these other brands. So what I do is I go here, open up my Lyft app, and you can see in the bottom left here, there's a little button for scooters. So I open up scooters, same thing, scan, scan the QR code here, searching, and there we go. Now to end the ride on all these scooters, it's pretty much exactly the same. You click and ride. The other thing is, these scooters, you have to take a picture when you park them. Um, this is a way for cities to prevent people from leaving these scooters just willy-nilly or dumping them in oceans and rivers. The idea is that by taking a picture, it's essentially verifying that you stored it in a secure, safe location. So this one was slower, getting to about 14, 15 miles an hour. It took around nine or 10 seconds. This lift actually has an interesting safety feature to prevent against a sticking throttle. If you go ahead and try to activate the motor when the throttle is full on from a stop, it won't let you do it. You have to start with the throttle off and then turn it on as you start kicking. This also has a much higher kicking speed, so it's not gonna take off at such a low momentum like the Razor did. Lyft specifically recommends two big pushes before you can apply Is that what they say? Yeah, two big pushes. So, let's see if that works. Ready? One, two. Yeah. 341 inches to take the lift to stop. Divide that by 12 inches and a foot. 28 feet to stop from like 14 miles an hour. Granted, it's like a very tiny grade. And I'm a big dude. Yeah, but that's awful. That's really bad. Now when it came to testing, obviously we weren't necessarily gonna put the Lyft and the Bird back to back if it was essentially the same design scooter. But we went out and we found a different style Bird. This one says powered by Segway, and it is slightly different than the other scooters we have looked at. First off, you can see an exposed battery pack right here on the stock. It also has front and rear brakes, which is sort of interesting. Now up here on the handlebar, we have a stop button instead of a lever. And what that button does is it actuates the front motor and slows you down 
somewhat effectively, but there's also a very substantial foot brake in the rear. So it's got dual brakes. Now in terms of the handlebar height here, where are we sitting at? About 40 inches, so pretty standard. And then deck length is... One of the longer ones? About 30 and a half. About, about 30 inches, uh, give or take. About four inches, so quite a lot of ground clearance on this bird. Okay, so about seven to eight seconds to 13 miles an hour. That was pretty Whoa, good. That was a good stop. That was really good. So this one's a little trickier because you have the back foot brake and this handbrake, uh, but using them together actually resulted in a much better stopping distance. 250 divided by 12. It's about 20, 21 feet in terms of the stopping distance on this bird. Which is, what, 10 feet better than the Razor? Keep in mind though, you may have been moving slower. This is not a very fast machine. That's true. So Michael, let's talk about our experiences on these scooters. Let's start off with the Razor. Well, the Razor kind of felt like the budget scooter of these maybe. Uh, it felt pretty slow, the braking performance wasn't very good. Uh, the one upset I see with the Razor is that those big tires make it actually really comfortable. It's got a good ride. And we tried several different Razors and it was by far the least reliable we found out here. So of, of the ones we tried, probably 15 of them, only two? two worked. And one died right after we got it. And one died right after we got it. In terms of the app, the Razor app was the least consistent in terms of showing correct battery percentage. Yep. It was just all over the place. It's just not a very high quality unit. It's not fast either. No. So let's talk about the lift scooter. I liked the lift scooter, actually. I thought that it was kind of a good balance of the right size, big tires, decent speed, and decent braking performance. Yeah, I actually like the lift scooter too. I think the best part of the lift scooter is if you already have the lift app, yeah. you don't have to re-input credit card information into another app, right? right? You don't have to log into anything else. So I love that about the lift scooter. It was smooth, it was quiet, Yep. Um, and this applies to the, the bird of the, the, the same make, right? Exactly, yeah. And the brakes were fairly good. Fairly good. It wasn't a great performer, but it certainly wasn't a poor performer. It was middle of the pack. Now let's talk about the second bird scooter we found. So this is the one, it was built by Segway. It had um, front and rear brakes, yep. which was good. Yep. But the rest of the scooter was kind of junky. Yeah, it was kind of crude feeling. The ride was really harsh. It braked very well though. I mean, that was by far the shortest braking distance. It had this interesting thing where the front brake wasn't mechanical. It used like the front hub motor. Yeah, exactly. To slow it down. It wasn't a great performer. It was very crude in its feeling. Um, so not my favorite. If you're gonna get the, the bird scooter, get the bigger wheeled one. Get the one that's like the lift scooter. So the Lime scooter was definitely our performance superstar here. It was by far the fastest. It wasn't the best at braking, but considering how much speed it has, I think it was a front runner in the braking category for sure. Yeah, it's got a really long deck. Mm -hmm. The unit itself is super heavy. Very heavy. Very heavy. Dense. And I think it feels the highest quality. You have the spinometer, and we tried a bunch of them today. They all worked. They all worked. They all had a lot of charge in them. They did. So I think the Lime scooter is a really good option. The one thing I really dislike about it are the tiny wheels. The tiny wheels make it super unstable, especially considering how fast this one goes. Yeah. It's a little bit of a scarier scooter to ride, but once you get used to it, I think it's not too bad. That's my only big complaint with it. Overall, I think my winner in terms of which one I like to ride the most is the Lime scooter for sure. I agree. I think the Lime scooter is going to be the most reliable when you ride it. Uh, we found a ton of them. They were all charged feels good to ride, the app is easy to use, the yeah. Lime Scooter is the best one. Now let's talk about whether or not they were safe. That's a big That's a big question mark for me. Yeah. Uh, with the Razor Scooter, especially the one that we found, it had that sticky throttle, uh, which was really scary. It could almost rip the scooter out of your hands if you weren't careful about it. Yep. Uh, there's little training involved. Anyone can download the app and hop onto one of these things. And you have to ride them on the sidewalk, at least here in Denver, which means you're mingling with pedestrians, dogs, children, bicyclists, skateboarders. There's a lot of people you could potentially run into. Now these scooters typically have an age requirement. They make you scan your driver's license and that's 18 years old. 18. But I was really disappointed with the braking performance even on the best of the scooters, Yeah. right? I mean, from 15 miles an hour, it shouldn't take 25 to 30 feet to slow down, right? And if it, that's the only really safe way to slow down is using the brakes. 
Yeah, I because mean, there's so much momentum with you and the scooter together that yeah. you can't really stop it with your feet with any real significance. You kind of have to jump off if you had to make an emergency, an emergency stop. Yeah. And although the Lime was our winner in this competition, the small wheels made it somewhat unstable at speed. Yeah, so safety, I mean, you guys have to be careful with these. I think you can do it in a way that, you know, if you pay attention, if you keep your head up, if you make sure not to run into people, they're not the worst things in the world, but safety is certainly a big concern for me. And as long as you're safe and you're following local laws and regulations wearing your helmet, they're actually a lot of fun. They are super fun, that is for sure. One thing about helmets though, yes, they tell you to wear a helmet, but there's no system in place for them to make sure you're wearing a helmet. And half the people that we saw riding these today weren't wearing helmets. Yeah, oh absolutely. So for sure, something to consider there as well. Well guys, thank you so much for watching. As always, I'm Tommy. And Mike. Stay tuned to the Fastlane car now and truck for scooter reviews. Fastlane scooter for scooter reviews. The Fastlane scooter. We'll see you guys next time.